The most highly anticipated heavyweight fight in UFC history headlines UFC 220 this coming Saturday between champion Stipe Miocic, who is a well-rounded mixed martial artist who's been in the UFC for a while, who has lightning quick hands, and evidently hits like a truck against the challenger and maybe the scariest man in mixed martial arts right now, Francis the Predator Ngannou, who's a man who we don't know too much about. My name's Flying Brian J. This video is brought to you by MMAmania.com. Go to MMA Mania for all of your MMA needs. We've got articles, podcasts, and even videos. And while you're at it, please give this video a thumbs up. Let's start talking about the matchup with the tail of the tape. Nothing on it is significant, according to Fightnomics by Reed Kuhn with Kelly Krieger. Three-inch reach advantage for Ngannou, not significant. Four-year youth advantage for Ngannou, not significant. But according to UFC.com, Ngannou is going to weigh in about 10 pounds heavier than Miocic. And that right there is what I want to talk about at the beginning here. Perhaps it's not that big a deal in the heavyweights to be 10 pounds different than each other. But Ngannou in his UFC career has shown not only is he huge, but he is strong as an ox. And he has big brothered a couple of maybe not that high level of competitors, but at least one high level competitor in Alistair Overeem. Overeem came out. Tried to throw a goofy left hook at the very beginning, but then went for a clinch attack. And Ngannou got an underhook, switched position right away, and just out-muscled Overeem. Sure, Overeem, Overeem could be considered an aging competitor who's on his way out, but I was impressed by the big brothering that Ngannou did to Overeem. Also, Anthony Freight Train and Hamilton tried a similar thing. Tried to come in there for a takedown. Ngannou snagged an arm, probably was going to take it home with him, Kimura, and just kind of bullied Anthony Hamilton around. And even Curtis Blades in his UFC debut did not have very much success trying to grapple with Ngannou or any success whatsoever. Why I bring that up is I mentioned Stipe is a well-rounded mixed martial artist. He's got a pretty good snatch single leg. He's got good ground and pound as he showed against Mark Hunt and Overeem, but I'm not certain he'll be able to do that, especially at a slight size disadvantage against Francis Ngannou. Now that would be a smart thing for Stipe to do is, is work for that, maybe tire out Ngannou because Ngannou's never been to the third round, fourth round, or a fifth round, obviously, in his UFC career. So Stipe should try to take this thing into the later rounds. In terms of the striking matchup, I'm impressed with the hand speed of Ngannou. Now, my most viewed video of my career was where I predicted Stipe versus Overeem. And I predicted Stipe would defeat Overeem. And the reason why, the number one reason why, was Stipe has lightning quick hands and Overeem has been slowing down with his hand speed as of late. And Stipe, his last three opponents, don't have the quickest hands ever. Werdum is slowing down and he came in there reckless and kind of was a moronic idea to chase Stipe like that. JDS, he's slowing a little bit shopworn as well, looked timid in that fight, and his hands are slowing. And of course, Overeem's hands are slowing, but in Overeem versus Ngannou, when Ngannou sent Alistair to the Shadow Realm, oh my gosh, it's still one of the most savage knockouts ever. That knockout shot, like I'm calling it a shovel hook because it came from way over here and down by his hip, it came to Overeem's chin in the blink of an eye. When John Anik was talking, I was kind of listening to John and not really watching, I guess. I was more in my ears, not in my eyes. And I almost missed it. That's how fast his hands were. Perhaps Stipe does have a speed advantage with his fists, but it's not going to be as pronounced against Ngannou as it has been with his last three opponents. And if Stipe has to, has to move forward and come at, Ngano Stipe holds his hands right about collarbone height. It's really, really not ideal. I do not think that Ngano is going to chase Stipe like Werdum did. So Stipe might have to lead this thing, and he usually does. He usually comes forward, and a lot of people think that he has great footwork. And I'm not certain that he has great footwork. It's kind of like a shuffle, but he maybe is the most mobile heavyweight because not a lot of heavyweights are really moving and shaking when they're in that octagon. I mean, I know Ngannou's not going to. He's going to just step forward like a scary man, meet Stipe in the center of the octagon, and then throw some big bungalows. I'm scared that Stipe's not going to be able to implement the grappling game because of how strong Ngannou is and how he's shown us that strength and just his pure raw athleticism in his past few fights. And I don't know if Stipe's going to be able to hang with him in a punch for punch matchup. We haven't really seen Ngannou get wobbled or hurt and come back from anything. Stipe did get wobbled, dropped by Overeem recently, and he's been knocked out in his UFC career by 
the skyscraper Stefan Struve, but I don't know if holding his hands here and getting in a firefight in the middle of this octagon is really going to bode well for Stipe Miocic. And basically, I'm going to go with hashtag and new by pure physicality, raw athleticism, scary raw power, and a little bit of guesswork. I'm going to guess that he's going to have the more effective defense in this fight when Stipe is going to move forward with his hands at his collarbones. Tell me who you're picking in the comment section down below. Are you a betting man? What is your best bet for this main event where I've got Francis the Predator and Ganu becoming the new UFC heavyweight champion of the world? Give this video a like once again. I'll see you on my next one. Namaste. Namaste right here. Peace out, y'all.